Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Matt McBride, the co-founder and CEO at Ment. Matt, how are you today? Jared, I'm doing awesome. It's great to be here. Excited to uh, have a podcast here. I'm excited. You're probably one of our closest guests because you're you're up near uh, Orlando and we're right near Tampa. Uh, it's about as close as it's going to get. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just a, a quick uh, a shot down I-4 and, and we can be there. Ooh, that, that, that whole phrase, quick, uh, depending <laughs> on the time of the day, it, it can be a pretty brutal drive or it could be a pretty painless drive. Uh, well, I'm really excited to have you here, Matt. For, for those that don't know you, could you just give us a quick, uh, quick bit on your background? Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, you know, born or you know, born in Indiana, but really raised in, in Michigan and went to school in, in Michigan um, and uh, actually got an opportunity to, to move to Florida, move to Orlando and, and work for a healthcare startup um, that didn't quite uh, work out, but uh, was a great uh, learning experience. I was in charge of technology for that company. Um, and then uh, I went to work for Varian Medical Systems, which is an amazing company. So um, was doing a lot of work uh, for medical oncology practices. Uh, From there, I I built and exited an ed tech uh, platform, actually. And um, after that, I had some friends of mine, three other friends of mine. They had had a successful exit as well um, in the healthcare space. And so... Um, we really wanted to, to come together and, and build a company that could, you know, be part of the solution in healthcare. And we really wanted to, um, uh, you know, play into this uh, transition of, you know, this consumerism of healthcare, right? Patients becoming consumers and, and really looking at some of the other technologies that were happening in other industries and see how we could apply that to healthcare to uh, you know, make an impact, build something big and, and make an impact and do something positive for, for healthcare. It's interesting. A lot of the like top entrepreneurs in healthcare had like exits in ed tech. So, you know, uh, <laughs> so Guy Friedman over at steady MD, same thing. He had an exit in ed tech. Um, uh, who is it? Uh, Sean glass that was running, um, Oh, what's that company? It's the, the, the woman's health company up in, um, DC Advantia, Advantia health. He was in the ed tech space before it's, uh, what are your thoughts on why the former entrepreneurs in ed tech are having success in healthcare? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, you know, you, you gotta learn, uh, you need to, you need to learn a few things before you jump into healthcare. But I think from, from, um, my transition, it was, we were, uh, building products in the professional education space for tax and accounting. So like the CPA exam and and, and other exams, like, uh, there was a tax preparer exam and, um, with, um, uh, sort of the, Uh, Obamacare and everything that was happening around that, you know, your, your healthcare was now going to become part of your, your taxes, right? And do you have healthcare and uh, you are eventually going to be penalized if you didn't have healthcare? You know, that's all those, that's all, you know, played out in different ways. But um, a lot of people in the tax industry were thinking that they were not only going to sell you you know, tax services or accounting services, but then they were going to have to sell, they were going to have to broker you healthcare because you, you'd be staring at a tax bill eventually that would outweigh uh, what you could buy health insurance for. And so um, uh, really got introduced to telemedicine through that because a lot of uh, tax organizations were thinking, well, I might start trying to sell telemedicine to just see how that goes and, and kind of build my process 
around that and kind of became fascinated with with that idea. Um, but I think uh, also I think you know healthcare is one of those places where you can just make an impact. We're all going to be patients. We're all patients already, right? Doctors are going to be patients. Everybody is part of the healthcare system. Um, uh, you know, multiple times in our in our life, we average in the U.S. going to the doctor's office three to four times a year. So, I think probably a lot of founders too see this is a place to make an impact and and have a good uh, you know strong purpose behind the business that you're building. I didn't plan on asking you that until I had a moment of deja vu. I'm like, wait a second, I've heard this. I exited my ed tech company and I went into healthcare. I'm like, this is, I have to mention this. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Uh, I, I would love, I, I know you mentioned it a little bit before, but every time we have a guest come on, we say, tell us the why, how, what of your company. So we'd love to hear that for, uh, I know you already hit some of it when you did your intro, but if you had to break it down short and sweet, those three buckets, uh, talk us through men's why, how, and what. Yeah, so I think you know our our mission is really about trying to make healthcare easier um, for everybody, so they can be happier and and healthier. And uh, the way we really have approached that is by creating a uh, enterprise grade patient engagement platform, so we can really automate a lot of the different touch points between a patient and uh, a healthcare organization. So patient self-scheduling, reminders, forms, we have AI, digital check-in, payments, telemedicine, um, and there's a lot of different flexibilities uh, around those workflows. Um, and I think, you know, some of the, I think really, you know, a, a sort of the main problem that our customers are looking to solve is typically around no-shows or, or being able to help more people. So I think um, not only can engagement be streamlined so that staff isn't having to do so much manual work by uh, you know, offering patients conveniences like telemedicine or allowing them to do their forms in a frictionless experience or make a payment, allowing them to connect and engage before the appointment happens, they're more likely to attend that encounter, stay on top of their, their health. And, uh, so it, it's a win, uh, for, for our, our, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'd, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts, Matt, on the future of patient engagement. Now I know that's a huge topic, but would love to hear kind of through your lens, uh, where you see the future of patient engagement, uh, heading, um, would really like to hear that. Yeah, so I, I think uh, that AI will have a big role to play. But if you sort of imagine this patient journey, I think is the best way to, to describe this. So imagine we can book our own appointment online. If you need to you know, cancel, reschedule, you can do that whenever you want. Um, and then imagine having a check-in experience. You can do all your forms. You can make your co-payment you can even get your vitals captured through a web camera, as an example. Um, from, from there, uh, as we sort of uh, move to around the time of the visit, you know, there's, there's AI that could potentially uh, help the practice determine if you know, you're likely to come in uh, or AI to maybe look at um, uh, you know, could, would, if this is a telemedicine visit, maybe AI could determine, well, this person might have difficulty. Here is something to send them, to intervene, to help them so that this visit is successful. Uh, all the way to uh, in the appointment itself, right? Maybe uh, AI that removes any language barriers by having translations happen automatically to AI that does all the documentation for the provider. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for automation um, that uh, uh, with, the, with sort of the end goal, I think the end goal of our vision is that patients and providers can just spend time like you and I are spending time right now, right? It's not 
you know, quick, you know, two, two, three minutes. And then, you know, they've got to do a bunch of documentation and a chart, or maybe they're staring at their laptop the whole time. It's really sort of letting the computers kind of handle some of these processes automatically in the background so that doctors can just do what probably drove them to become, to become a doctor in the first place, really, which is to help people spend time with, with people. And, and so I think, uh, uh, that's sort of our, our vision and where we think patient engagement is heading. Now, tying into your, your views on the future of patient engagement, you mentioned AI a couple times in there. So talk us through why we need more AI in healthcare. Uh, I guess that's, that's one way to phrase it, but we'd we'll love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a tremendous amount of data that is available now, whether you want to talk about clinically or whether we're looking at patient engagement. Um, But, you know, healthcare, especially considering the pandemic, has been pretty overworked. I mean, there's 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 a pandemic, there's um, tremendous administrative burdens. So uh, finding talent, uh, keeping talent is, I think, only going to become more and more difficult. And so we have these computers, these machines that can take all of this data, take all of this information and can process it uh, you know, millions of times faster than a human could process it. And so I think it's going to lead to better care. It's also going to uh, uh, allow for other, uh, automated interventions. For example, maybe we think the person isn't going to show up to their appointment, or maybe we think that they're going to have technical difficulties prior to a telemedicine visit, or, um, you know, there's all sorts of, of other applications, but these computers can just crunch through all of this data in, uh, uh, you know, fractions of a second or minutes or hours that would, where we just don't have the manpower uh, to to handle it, so I think AI is going to play a, a big role in in um, solving um, you know some of the human capital issues in in healthcare going forward. Yeah, I mean it's been interesting to see how things have progressed over the last couple of years alone. Um, we're I think healthcare in general is still definitely behind on the you know when it comes to like things like AI, right? Other industries have definitely used AI probably even more than uh, healthcare early on. We're getting there. Um, I remember always seeing the ads for like IBM, uh, the IBM Watson, right? It was, it was all over the place. And then I think they ended up rebranding or putting it under a new company or something yeah, like they that. They sold it. Yeah. Um, but that was like all you ever heard for, for years about AI and healthcare. So it, it'll be interesting to see how it continues to evolve. Um, would love Matt to, you know, one of the things that's that's happened as of recently is changing regulations around like texting patients. So that that's affected engagement. Um, can you talk us through how? Yeah. So I think in uh, you know around 2015, uh, the TCPA or the Telephone Consumer Protection Act was modified to finally, you know, allow texting and and some of these communications around important uh, healthcare events. So like appointment reminders, prescription refills, things of this nature. And then uh, last year, uh, Facebook took a, a case all the way to the Supreme Court that pretty much decimated the TCPA. So um, a a lot of the rules and regulations were based on the definition of a auto dialer, which has basically been reduced to um, the definition of an auto dialer has been reduced to uh, generating a phone number or or sequential phone numbers. So basically, it's just sort of uh, randomly generating phone numbers. And so if you are not using a system uh, that doesn't do those things, you can text people, you can uh, call them and and deliver them reminders or or other messages. And so I think what this does is um, payments 
had uh, healthcare payments and accounting matters had carve outs in 2015, where you had to have express written consent if you were going to text, email, or call somebody about a, about a bill, essentially. Well, that has really been decimated. And so I think on the, on the one hand, you've got organizations who are still sending paper bills. And on the other hand, you've got consumers are saying, hey, why can't I pay like I'm paying in every other industry? Why can't, why can't I have a more frictionless experience? And so that has really become possible now. And so uh, automated patient payments is a big focus for MEND and I think a key touch point uh, that, that we've innovated on and that we have available so that as soon as a, a balance is known, we can initiate a text and an email and then give the patient a, a frictionless option to, to pay, which is more what they want. And then, you know, organizations are getting paid faster and it's, it's more automated and there's less paper. Um, so uh, I think um, maybe what a lot of folks have thought, oh, well, you have to, well, you have to get an opt-in, you have to have this, you have to have that. I still think it's a best practice to do that. You should get folks to, to opt in, but from a legal perspective or a regulatory perspective, it, it was really, TCPA was really decimated last year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, MEND continues to, to, to move forward. Um, you obviously are addressing those, uh, those changes very well, um, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, and just see how the whole industry reacts uh, over time. I know it's, it's uh, healthcare is constantly evolving, so it's interesting to see how all the companies try to evolve as well. Uh, but, but Matt, I want to thank you once again so, like, so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. It's been great having you, and uh, it's great to have uh, a local entrepreneur on the podcast, local-ish. <laughs> yeah, Jared, uh, appreciate it. And, and thank you for having me. And uh, this was awesome.